Please take in mind that this is opinion based and should not be taken seriously. Man, there's a lot of Fate spin-offs out there. Then you even have the spin-offs of the spin-offs. It's like, it just never ends. And each one has their own number of fans. Hmm? What's this? Oh right. I forgot this happened. There have been bad adaptations when it comes to the Nazuverse. Tsukihime's anime is notorious for not existing, and Fate Stay Night's Dean adaptation is now a laughing stock, even though at the time of its release was actually pretty decent. But no adaptation managed to be so inconsequential that to say that people legit forgot it existed would be an understatement. And that was Fate Extra Last Encore. I was bashing Fate Apocrypha in my other video, but at least Fate Apocrypha was enjoyable and was easy to follow. This on the other hand, what am I even looking at here? Expectations are very important for pretty much every media. High expectations can kill the release of a decent show or game, simply because the expectations were too high to be fulfilled and low expectations can save a release of an overall mediocre show or game, simply because the bar was so low. As I mentioned before in my Fate Apocrypha video, Apocrypha promised a lot and in the end couldn't fulfill the expectations, which is one of the reasons why Fate Apocrypha has such a bad rap. So what about Fate Extra Last and Core's expectations? Well, when Last and Core was first announced, there was a decent amount of hype. While the animation studio did leave some doubtful, Shaft's unique animation direction suits well for psychological intense shows, and Fed Extra did meet that criteria. So both me and others were hopeful for a good adaptation. Now, it's important to note that Last and Core kind of went through this non-existent phase. There were no spoilers, very little was coming out about the show, and so most people were completely blind about it. There was just not enough information to know what it was about. So the logical conclusion for many is that it will be an adaptation of Fate Extra. Then some images came out showing the female main character, which left many confused since the original poster had the male main character. However, this wouldn't be the first time where both the female and male of a show would show up in the same anime. Fate Grand Order's OVA had both the male and female show up, so many just chuck at this image as it being bait. Maybe we would see the female version in a small scene where she just dies off as one of the participants. And then, the show started. To be completely honest, the first episodes weren't too bad. It looked like we were headed for a Fate Extra adaptation with some creative liberties. However, I believe the downfall began as quick as Episode 3, where it not only started to deviate, but it just started to make up its own rules and laws that did not exist before, leaving first-timers lost and Fate fans confused. As far as characters go, Last and Core was mostly kept afloat because of Nero. Nero was very quick at grabbing everyone's attention, and she alone was keeping the series afloat. As for other characters, if you didn't know them already from playing Fate Extra or Fate Grand Order, then there was very little keeping you attached. While the story did show other characters here and there, the main focus was always Nero and Hakno. However, one thing to note is that the characters in Last and Core were considerably different from their Fate Extra counterparts. Shinji is much more mature than he is shown in Fate Extra. Dan is much more cold and calculating than he is shown in Fate Extra. Alice is, well, poor Alice. And Julius ain't even there. He's basically a berserker at this point. Oh, and there's like this new character, Amari, that's there for some reason. Like, I don't know why this character was given relevancy. She was literally killed off off-screen, without us even knowing she was there. Also, Rin and Rani can now fuse with their servants. What is this, Digimon? As for Akuno, I'll give them some credit since they tried to do something unique with them, but 
it just didn't work that well. So essentially, as far as likable characters go, you have Nero, and that's it. Even Rin is kind of a shell of her glorious self. Not only that, it kind of became obvious at one point that Lassen Corps was giving more nods to Fate Grand Order than it was giving to its original predecessor, Fate Extra. Which is never a good thing to see. So, let's talk about Lassen Corps plot. Because, by far, it's what makes it the most forgetful. So, I'm going to give you the explanation of Last and Core. Last and Core is taking place in the Fate Extra universe. Only the big boss, Saver, actually won and changed all the rules and laws of the world and returned a bunch of dead masters and servants, that also happened to be the ones from the game. And Hakuno is the collective hatred of all the dead masters from the war, that also happens to resemble as a gender band of Saver's original master. Now, you might be wondering, why can't you remember this? To which it's actually very simple to explain. Because all of this is only explained in detail inside the three special episodes that weren't released when the anime came out. So, let me get this straight. The anime did barely anything to explain what was going on. Then on episode 10, it just stopped airing. And if you wanted to know what happened next, you would need to watch the special episodes that would be released several months after, but wouldn't be aired. Meaning that you would actually need to wait for more than just a few months until it would be picked up and subbed. Okay, okay, let me get this straight again. An anime that was barely keeping people's attention because of how confusing it was, saw it was a good idea to release the last episodes on a separate date as special episodes outside of reach of most people. Like, I'm sorry, am I missing something here? Who thought this would be a good idea? Like, I'm not even joking, there's no point in talking about the last three episodes, because no matter how good they might have actually been, the show has effectively killed its momentum. The show did not bother to explain anything in detail, the world was practically unexplored, so any first-timers were immediately turned off. Even fake veterans like me, who can somewhat keep up, only stayed because Nero made it enjoyable, so I failed to understand the logic of releasing the end at a different date. The show is dead! It's so dead, it's literally forgotten! People don't even remember the show happened! You managed to do what Tsukihimi fans have wanted the most, which is to forget the anime ever happened. And the plot ain't even that amazing. Since most of the masters and servants had died, we could have at least hoped that they were killed by the original Hakuno, so now they would be fighting a ghost of the person that beat them, resulting in more drama and clash of personalities. But that wasn't even the case. Most of them were beaten by someone else. Meaning that this is the first time Hakuno is facing most of them. Wait, wait, let me get this straight. All of the drama, the sadness of defeat, the bitterness of victory was removed for... For what exactly? Hakuno feels only edgy anger? Where's Hakuno's questioning his own resolve after beating Dan? Where's Hakuno questioning his own goal after beating Alice? Like, where are all these bittersweet victories that made you feel bad about the loser? Like, sure, I felt bad when I saw Dan and Alice die again, and it was very heartbreaking. But that's not because I was sad about their death. I was just sad that the anime's story forced them to go through hell. Like, that was all that I was sad about them. These characters were so well made in Fate Extra, and they would just turn into these abominations. Just why? I don't understand. Part of me kind of understands what they were going with Hakuno. However, it was completely unneeded. Hakuno may start completely bland, but there is character development and there is intense moments of psychological drama throughout Fate Extra. It's not like Hakuno is Sieg who start and ending is the same. Hakuno actually develops as a character. And to be honest, I could go on a tangent on how good Fate Extra's story was by far superior to whatever they were trying to do, but I think I'll leave that for another video. Ultimately, the best way to describe Last and Core is that it's a wasted potential. 
Fate Extra did not need to go through these weird convoluted twists and turns to make it intense. Fate Extra's story is already very intense and psychological heavy. It's good to me that the people responsible for the adaptation saw they could do a better job and it only ended up blowing up in their face. In the end, Last and Core just had no audience. First timers were just confused, and veterans of the franchise just couldn't be bothered, leaving the anime in the state of void, where it remains to this day. Maybe Fate Extra a record can revive the Fate Extra franchise again, and potentially we can get a proper adaptation eventually. Hopefully, not from Shaft this time. But that was my opinion of Fate Extra Last and Core. What about yours? What were your feelings about Fate Extra Last and Core? And have you ever heard that it existed? Or have you forgotten that it existed? All of these are very interesting questions. I completely forgot Last and Core existed. Originally, this video was going to be about Fate Extra. But halfway through the script, I remembered. Wait, there's Last and Core. I could make a very easy video about that trash. Let's talk about that. And that's kind of my experience with Last and Core. I actually remember enjoying the show when it was coming out. Mostly, again, because of Nero, because Nero really is a very good character. But as the story moved on, it just became more and more weird and taking weird times. But this kind of revealed what Shaft had an issue with. Shaft is very heavy on psychological um, animation. If you looked at some of their animes, their animations can get very weird, but they're purposely weird to kind of convey this message of twisted psychological problems and all that, which should in theory work well with Fate Extra. But it's very clear that the creative liberties that they took was just... It was like someone was playing Fate Extra on drugs, and this is what we got. A Fate Extra adaptation of someone reimagining Fate Extra while on drugs. But anyway, if you enjoy my content, leave a like and subscribe. And leave a comment down below. Until next time, bye.